But Kristen, she's going to talk about some of her um, ideas and, I, and help with uh, the research part of it. Good morning, everyone. I hope that I'm a familiar face. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm going to make sure before I start really talking that you can see my screen. I'm going to share my screen with you. Can everyone see my screen? You should be able to see the library's website right now. Okay. So, um, my name is Kristen Bailey. I'm a librarian with the Mercer University Library. I'm here today to help with Professor Gustafson's assignment for um, women's history and media. So, most of you are probably familiar with this website, which is the library's website, and you can see that we've got some, some news items up here about when we're available to help this coming Easter weekend. But if you come down the page, You'll see we have some options here that are like have two videos and there's this option for research guides and tutorials. If you click that research guides and tutorials, you would come to a new page that's a bunch of um, research guides by subject. And you'll see that those research guides feature Africana studies, classics, great books, a number of different, but if you come down to history, there'll be one specifically for your course. So you'll see that we have um, a couple of them here and then down here we've got um, your History 377. And if you click that, you'll find resources particular to your assignment. And the first thing you'll see is that we have the assignment text here. So you'll see that this is the updated assignment text. Dr. Gustafson sent it to me last week and that you have um, women in the media from the 1920s, 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And you can see the full text of that assignment right here. Um, to help you with this, you know that you've got to have some secondary sources and some primary sources. And I'm here to help you find those sources. I'm um, a little bit farther down the page, you see databases here. Um, three of these databases are secondary source databases. Does anybody know what a secondary source is? Okay, y'all can jump in. <laughs> Difference between secondary and primary source? A secondary source is a source like not written at the time you're studying and it's written by usually a scholar of some sort. So yes, a secondary is something that com generally comments on a primary source and a primary source is something that was written in the period by someone who was there. So you'll see that we have the New York Times here and I've written that this is not a database for scholarly sources but for primary news sources. So if you're wanting to study the media, this is our one really good newspaper database that covers back to like the 1850s and up to the 2010s. So you should be able to get a wide variety of news sources about women in the period you're looking for if you want to look at women in the news. Um, can I also say something? I, I would assume, um, Kristen, that the um there would also be information about when they would have advertisements or things like that in the new york times right do they have yeah, it there not so much see they what they do is they don't clip the whole page so you can't uh -huh, read through okay. the page. They, they clip the article by article which means often you're missing images and advertisements okay. in that because those are generally copyrighted by someone else Mm -hmm. And so they can't always transfer that over into the database. So you'll be able to really easily find the news article itself, but you won't be able to find a lot of the advertisements or the images associated with them. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the next three are secondary sources. So you see that we've got communication and mass media complete index the full text and project muse and these are all databases that concentrate on um, almost like media studies resources for secondary sources so common mass media will definitely cover advertisements film tv um, and a wide variety of other media based sources and then you'll see that the SOS index will cover like women's studies and social psychology and we'll probably also talk about images of women in media um, Project Muse is a great humanities-based database that is going to have a really wide variety of sources. So those are really good places to come and get secondary sources for what you're, what you're looking for. I've also come down here and in this, um, in this little gallery you can see that there's some books that, that are in the library's collection. They should all be ebooks um, that you can look at and some of them are secondary like this Doing Women's Film History um, and pink, so there's Pink Slip, which is also a secondary source. 
Um, so that's a secondary source. Another secondary source. Um, the last one on this list is actually a primary source that might be interesting for, this was actually for the 70s, but think about dating manuals as another source of women in the media. So this is a dating manual from the 70s that we actually have an ebook copy of. And if you click the link, it should refer back to the catalog. And we will try that clicking one more time. It should refer back to the link to the actual full text of the resource. So it's going to ask you to log in because we're all off campus. And it should then link you back to that full text of the book. So you'll see that here, Sex and the Single Girl, which was republished in 2003, but was originally published in either the late 60s or early 70s. It's actually, it looks like 1962. Yeah. So for the 60s, so, this could be a good source for you all. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, Feisty Fun and Totally Frank, Sex and the Single Girl offers advice to unmarried women that is relevant today that it, as, as it was when it burst onto the scene in the 1960s. So this one might be an interesting, like dating manuals might be an interesting option for you to take if you're doing the 60s. Um, so these are all sources that the library provides for you, but I also want you to know that especially for primary sources, there's a lot that you can find for free on the internet. So you see that I've got the library sources here. Underneath is online sources. So if you, the first thing up here is kind of something to help you if you're having trouble picking a topic. There's a really interesting podcast called You Must Remember This, which is a, um, a history of the first decade, first century of Hollywood. So she goes through and she'll do different topics sometimes think on things like, um, this one's particularly the first female star to conquer Hollywood's ageism. So you can listen to the podcast, but the one reason I chose this is because she offers very extensive notes on what she, what she produces her podcast on, including all of the sources that she originally, um, she originally used for the podcast. So if you come down the page, you'll see that she, she um, links to the books that were cr written about Marie Dressler, her uh, biographies, which would be a primary source, and then secondary sources that relate to the podcast that she's done and images that support what she's talking about. So this is a really good idea, to, way to kind of try and figure out what an interesting topic might be and what you're doing. Farther down that page, you'll see that I've got some sections on public domain media, which include um, films in the public domain that you can watch for free on places like archive.org and YouTube. Um, and some of these movies are things from like D.W. Griffith. If you're doing the 1920s, it might be interesting to look at a number of his films early Alfred Hitchcock, George Malaise. And you can click either of these to get links to public domain films if you wanted to do that. There's even some films that are very recent, fairly recent that for some reason or another, um, I think Charade is one of them that when they were produced, there were some issues getting the copyright filed and so they've always been in the public domain. Um, if you want to look at portrait photographs, um, theatrical, photographs, fashion illustrations, the New York Public Library's digital collection is a great place to go. And you'll see that we've got, um, so this will be like, the, we've got uh, a wide variety of things and these would generally all be 1923 and before and there may be some stuff later because it's stuff that's in the public domain. Um, these two, if you're interested in magazines, are going to be interesting places to get magazine art and advertisement. So archive.org has a magazine rack that um, you can actually create a free account and check out. So you'll see that there's um, Game and Gamer magazines, knitting magazines, which might be interesting, Australian Women's Weekly magazines, and you can look at full scans of all of those magazines in here. Radio Electric Magazine, and you can see that this one already looks like it's got an interesting advertisement or image attached. So this is a good place to kind of get full scans of magazines, and there's also one called here Magazine Art, and it's an older website, but it has a lot of really good primary content on it. And they, they organize it in a way that might be a little bit easier if you're looking by subject, because you see that like fiction pulp magazines, farm magazines, advertising art in magazines, which might be a really interesting thing to do a topic on. And you can come through and you can see 
what the different advertisements are. And most of these will still be pretty early, might come, at, come into the 30s and 40s. Um, but it's going to be hard to find things for the 50s, 60s, 50s and 60s just because those things are still in copyright. Um, if you're looking for other primary sources, there's some online collections here. There are papers and like working information for a couple of different things. So we see that we've got women in journalism, which is comprehensive full life interviews with women journalists, um, particularly, um, and they've all been since the 20s. So you'll find things any a lot of the periods after. So a number of these might be um, broadcast television, civil rights. We also see we've got stuff that are um, women journalists in World War II women's travel diaries, which might be another interesting option. Um, and so there's a couple of different things here that would be interesting primary sources. But the one thing that I do want to show you before we leave is that you can actually look at almost every issue of Vogue. The problem is you can't download the pages and um, without paying for the database yourself because they don't offer like library access to this but um, you can actually read the first few pages of articles and you can actually see a lot of things. So if you come up here and look at issues, say that you were doing the 60s, you can see all of the covers for those 1960s Vogue's and what the, what the stories were. Um, and say if you like this one, you can then see what the name of the articles were, who they wrote for, um, a beauty bulletin, and then it'll actually show you the scans of the first two pages. So you can see here that we've got the, the horoscope here, which might be an interesting thing, looking at the horoscopes in newspapers, because those generally were leaning towards um, feminine characteristics. So does anybody have any questions about any of those sources? Or if you have a topic already picked, are there any sources that you would like help finding? You know, um, I was just going to say to everybody, um, a number, you know, our book, especially since uh, the Where the Girls Are, we'll talk a lot about this um, issue, especially if you have the 50s and 60s, um, uh, if, you're, if you're in that group. And there's a lot of things, you know, in the earlier as well. Um, we'll be talking, of course, about the, the wartime also. Um, so the thing I would just say is what I'm, I'm asking you to do is in addition to what we have in class, which I'd like you to use, uh, use at least three outside resources. This isn't a major research paper, but um, you can always use more than that. And I really encourage you to, to kind of dig in uh, some of these ideas and these places that uh, Kristen has, has identified. Um, there's a couple of other small sources. So I'm going to take you back to the library homepage, which I can click by getting here. And there's two more things that I want to show you. So if you're doing film, we do have three film databases, but the one that's probably most helpful for you would be Canopy. So if you come to databases and then come, go to K, it'll link you out to Canopy, which um, will have a wide variety of um, films, including recent films, but you can also see um, documentaries, which would be good secondary sources, and say that we were interested in um, media and communications, and I'm gonna have to move this again. Media and communications, you can also see that there's media studies and there's also a film studies section. So, but you can also see early film, short film, romance, war and action. Um, so there's a lot of, so you can probably actually watch films from your decade in this database, but you can also find documentaries about films in your decade. Um, Kristen, will you look something up really quick called The Hidden Army? The Hidden Army. See, the Hidden Army and see if anything I want to talk about. Uh, it's not coming up. Oh yeah, The Hidden Army. We may have it in a different database, so I'm actually going to go back to the home page. Okay. And use the discovery search to see if it might come up in Films on Demand or Alexander Street. It's a 1940s um, film that is kind of interesting. So oh, that's an article. So I'm going to restrict resource type to videos and apply and see if it comes back in one of the collections. 
And then I can also email you on the side if I find it someplace else on the internet after. Yeah, um, I did find, I just, I, I found it on um, YouTube, <laughs> but I just yeah. wondered if there was a, a better uh, way to find it. So it doesn't it. appear that we have access. Okay, that's, that's helpful, um, thank you. Um, so Canopy is a really good place for film content. And the one other thing, if you need any help, we have this Ask a Librarian page up here. So you can either email me at bailey underscore ka at mercer.edu or you can use any of these options, um, any of these options here. So we have a chat here that you can select to um, get immediate help during our hours from any of our librarians, a Zoom room that you can log into and we will be happy to share our screens with you. And then you're also free to email us. So those are ways that you can get in contact with us if you ever need any more help. And we will also be happy to help you with any of your Chicago style citations. Dr. Gustafson, is there anything else you'd like me to cover? Um, I don't think so. If, uh, just give one more chance for questions. Okay. Maybe hard to think about at 8 a.m. <laughs> but I, I think we're good. Okay. So everybody knows how to get in touch with you, and um, thank you so much for putting this site together. This will really help everybody um, very much. So we're not like you know having to uh, search around just for some of the basic stuff. So thank you. If you have any top, if you already kind of have a topic in mind and you're struggling finding resources, if you'll reach out to me, I can also put them in update that guide and for additional information based on your topics. Yeah. So. Awesome. Okay. Thank you.